Hello friends, this is Prashant from Laboratory Odyssey. So please like and share these videos and subscribe to the channel. This gives me support to work on such content. As you know, it takes a lot of effort and time to put together, put together something like that. And I hope that you will like these videos and you will learn from these videos. And if you have any questions or you need my help, then obviously you can comment that below the video and then I will try my best to help you out with that particular concern. So in the last session, we saw what are the high level components that are part of maximum integration framework. So we will start first with the first very important component that is known as external system. So what is the external system? External system is basically a placeholder where you can create multiple different kind of uh, integration and associate multiple different kind of integration components when you are dealing with integration like flat file integration, XML based integration or interface table based integration. And it also provides you ability to check the data into the queue to configure the different kind of queues. Then you can also associate different publish channel and enterprise service depending upon whether you are sending data out, outbound from Maximo to any external system or you are getting data from any external system to Maximo. And also provides you some other other options like you can create interface table from here, you can do the data import as well as you can do the data export. So let us go and take a look. So if we go to integration, then you have this application external system. And if I click, you will be able to see that it will be showing you a list of multiple different external systems. And some of the external systems are available uh, out of the box. So this ext sys1 is most of the time you will see if you are loading a demo data you will be able to see that this particular external system is available and if I click it shows me what is the name of the system obviously the description of the system then it shows me endpoint if I click you will be able to see that there are multiple different endpoints which are available and it will place some of the fields which are associated with the queues so if you are using jms queues then you know that there are two different kind of queues which are available in maximo one is uh, sequential queue and the other is continuous queue we will see about this queue in detail in the session but this is the place where you will be associating the queues and endpoint is something which will actually give you the address that from where the data has to be read if it is an inbound integration or from what is the place at which data need to be sent when it is an outbound integration. So you also have two other tabs one is publish channel and the other one is enterprise service. So when I have publish channel this is something which is used for asynchronous data transaction outbound from Maximo that is when you want to send some data. So in this particular case you can see that my endpoint is XML file. And then there are multiple out of the box publish channels which are away, which are available here. So you have an option to enable or disable them, and you can also associate the endpoint on each publish channel. If you are not specifying anything, then it will be taking the endpoint which is set up on the external system level. But then if you are taking, if you are defining it, then it is going to use this particular endpoint and its particular detail. So most of the time you will find that uh, you know the endpoint details are same. Uh, so where the endpoint are the key part where it tells you whether uh, you know which tells you that from where the data has to be read or to where data has to be left. Then uh, publish channels are basically used when you are trying to send data from Maximo to some other third party. For example, initially in the last video, I have given you an example that you want item transaction that is issue, return and transfer to be sent from Maximo to SAP. So in that particular case, you will be using one publish channel. So you will be creating a publish channel and from the publish channel, you will be able to send the data and the data will be sent to whatever details you have associated with this particular endpoint. Similarly, if you want to read the data, then in particular case you will be using enterprise service and as you can see here that we have 
the queues associated. This is not a real time or synchronous mode of transactions. These all are asynchronous transactions where data will be following either the queue or other message provider that you have that is Apache Kafka. Uh, in the case of, uh, similarly as you have uh, for publish channel in the case of enterprise service, you can create a enterprise service and for that particular enterprise service, you can define what operation that you have to do. So there are multiple different operations which are there. We will see that in more detail when we are going to work with enterprise service. And uh, you know, if you are creating a custom enterprise service, then this particular user defined checkbox will be checked. And then if you are your enterprise service is going to use the continuous queue, then obviously this particular checkbox has to be checked. So once you are done with this, you can basically enable and once you will be enabling, then you will be actually able to use this particular action on the system to send data out from Maximo or to get data from external system to Maximo. Other than that, you will be able to see that there are multiple different other select options which are also available. For example, you will be able to add or modify the, the message provider or the queues. You can also create the interface table from here. So we will do some hands-ons when we are going to set up the publish channel as well as the uh, enterprise service and that time we will see these features.